I'm just letting y'all know I'm going to stay on as long as I can, though. All righty. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Lipstick Radio Sound Booth once again. Thanks for joining us today. We have another fabulous guest in the house, and that is Aker. Aker has been in rotation, and he's sent me some more music. And, you know, I'm really, really excited about interviewing him to find out what makes him tick, what inspires him. He's all the way in Houston, Texas. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how are you doing, Aker? How are you doing? I'm blessed. I can't complain. Um, got some good news this week and things like that, and everything is coming along. Um, a, a great, successful 2014, so I can't complain at all. Congrats, King. Congrats. That's what's good. That is so wonderful. So, tell us first of all. You know, I, I want. You know, I like going back, getting into the nitty gritty. Just uh, you know, like how did you get in music in the first place? Did you have family that exposed you to it? Was it something you saw, a performer you saw? Like what inspired you in the first place? And did you start out playing any instruments? Uh, all of the above. <laughs> uh, my <laughs> grandma. My father was a uh, was a was a R and B singer. Um, she went as far as making it to some interviews out there in New York. And uh, I had a couple cousins that had like some uh, some some deals, and that was what made me get to the point of wanting to take it seriously at that time. But as far as how I started music, um, I um, you know I I really can't. It, it started when I just was trying to. I was going through a lot of uh, things as when I was I was younger, and I want I felt like if I write it down I could um, it was like a stress reliever just to just to write notes I guess, and it got to a point where I started um, liking hip hop because I was I, I got at hip hop at a at a later age I got I got into hip hop like around um, um, probably ninety ninety nine. I was real late to it. My mother was strict of having hip hop in the house like that. So when I got a, wow. when I got a chance to get a grip on it, it it, uh, it inspired me to know that I can express myself and people will listen. No, oh, dope. That's what's good. Well, you know what? What I wanted to say was um, that's always a good thing when it's kind of bred into you. <laughs> that's not what I call it. And uh, I know my kids were around me. I started out in the industry as a professional dancer, although I did play instruments back in the day. I oh. never wanted to be a musician. I liked having the ear and the knowledge and being able oh. to But, you know, it honestly helped me to be that much better of a dancer because I knew the beats. I knew this. I knew that, you know. So almost kind of like a, a DJ for exactly. You know, if you really are into drums and you know how to play or you get familiar with it, then your beats are always going to be solid in the pocket because the drums carry everything. So, right. you know, the time. so that's wonderful that, um, you know, you were exposed to it and things of that sort. So what made you get into the genre of music? I know you said that you weren't really originally into that, but what... What really inspired you to move into the genre that you're at, and what would you say your sound is like? Um, it was really just to be honest. It was a funny story. I really got into uh, like freestyling first, is what I was doing because it was just something we had did uh, on a school bus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the funny start at school. Yeah. What, was it? What is it starting out like the dozens? <laughs> <laughs> the um the funny story was um like a couple guys I, I I guess I wouldn't call them bullies but they was they what they did was started like uh, doing some freestyle battling things on bus on the bus while we was riding home and they were saying some things and they you know they they mentioned something about me and I just felt like I had to come back and from that moment <laughs> it was hip hop it was something about it that it was I, I don't know if it was. The fact that you really can say whatever you wanted, or you can be—I don't know—it it, it captivated me since then. So I, I sat down and I started listening to other artists. Like uh, I was a real pop, you know, pop at the time. He was—he uh, had just got, you know, it was like three years late after he got murdered. So I kind of was mm -hmm. uh, late to him. But I started listening to Pac. I was uh, getting big on Eminem. And I started trying to like rewrite their raps and, and just to just to spit them, just to 
try to give me a style and a flavor until a point where I started writing my own rap. So that's basically really how I started. It was really just a, something that we did and I took it serious. It's been a blessing to my life because it, it got me from, it took me away from doing all those things that people, they'll say a statistic like me would do. Yes, we, we don't need any more statistics <laughs> in our right. genre. If you know positive. what I'm here, we yeah. don't need <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm very proud of you for that and recognizing that too because we do have so many talented young men out there and women and unfortunately things happen and it leads them off of that path. And, you know, and I know it can be hard. You know, I, I grew up in the hood. I'm from Compton. And so I, I think... A lot. You know, Compton in the house. What's like this? Stop that. Next year, my first time. No, you dubs up. It looks exactly like I see it all properly, right? You know, because people are like, you're not from Compton. I'm like, actually, I am. You know, but I did pay attention in class, so. Oh, that's right. Because I had other goals, you know. Like, I had friends that, a lot of friends that um I, I knew of in junior high are not with us anymore. Some are in jail, some are dead, some are, you know, so I was just determined that was not going to be me or any of my offspring. So I just had a vision and a goal. But that doesn't mean that I turn my back on my community because I'm very, very active in my community and the homeless community. And I love inspiring people to do what they love and what they're passionate about. Yes, and that's what I say to you because I've noticed I was reading your EPK and, you know, I love it when people get into the business because it's a love and it's a passion. It's not like, hmm, yeah, if I do this one song that I can make this money and I can make, you know, I can get all these women. <laughs> well, I'm sure the women doesn't hurt, but, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, it's different when you're coming in from it as a mindset of it's a passion and it's, something that's in you, you want to get it out and share it with the world rather than, oh, how much money I can make. That should never be a first thought in any What is well, it turned like up. for you? Oh, right, so, somebody turned up early. Somebody call it? Somebody call it? <laughs> oh, no, yeah, that was a uh, Sorry about that. That joint hot, too, though. That song is hot. No, I, I, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fan. I had listened to it, man. I'm a big fan of that record, man. I heard it like a year ago, but it's just not really jumping out here in Texas, man. It's a nice record. Nice yeah, record. It's pretty dope. So tell us about one of your records that, um, like one of your hits. Like which one is more the you find is the most popular for you? Oh, uh, right now, um, I have a record called "You Don't Know." Uh, all I know. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's uh, I got a couple of them. I dropped them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> It is, um, You Don't Know Me is the one that's really booming. I didn't, um, it wasn't my intentions to have um, You Don't Know Me as hot as it became. It really, um, once I put it out, uh, a lot of people was like, man, yo, that's it. That's the one. When I really, my intentions was, uh, my record that I have uh, out, All I Know, was one of what I wanted it to be like my upcoming song for the new record. Um, I had just signed the new with a new management deal, so this was something that I was gonna try to work on to put on this new project. But instead, like this, uh, you don't know me. It's really blew up in the last two, three weeks. The last, it's been really the biggest record I've had so far. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. So, but when looking at your EPK though, you had quite a few. Songs, you know, you're, it seems like you in the studio, like, like I say with Smiths over there, he always in office. <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Got to be. It seems like you're in the studio a lot. So, how many songs do you have, like, total? Is it too many to count? <laughs> <laughs> too many to count because I, I put out records, but I know it's a lot of people. I mean, I, I can't really put a name on it because it's nothing like that. But it's a lot of people that write music and they just put it all out. They just, I don't think they even think of a marketing scheme about it. They just, they just put it out. And me, I like having messages and reasons why certain songs came out because at those moments, they mean something to me. Mm. So, um... As far as the records that I have, I have a lot that people haven't heard. Now, how many records I have out, I have probably like uh, five or six out right now. And over the time of um, of my career, I've been doing this for like ten over 10, 10 years. From the time I do it, I probably got about 20 songs out that people have heard. But oh, I got a lot to go. I still got to do 
That's a good indie start. So yes. let me ask you this. You said you had some good news this week. You want to share that news with us? Oh. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this question because I really don't want to give it away. Let me ask you this question. Are you putting this on YouTube, like, tonight <laughs> is, is the question? Right. He must you go know no, dude. Live right He's now. Live right now. <laughs> yes, <I'm> sir. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Hello. Uh, it's 2014, baby. Okay. You already yeah, know. It's like instant go. It's instant we'll go. Have to talk offline about what that good news is then. But yes, you are live in front of millions of people right now on YouTube. Okay, no, because when I, like I, you know, when I seen your show, I seen it on YouTube, so I was assuming like you added. I didn't know that we were like right now in the middle. Hello, world, just in case y'all. Want... <laughs> now let me start over. Hello, world. I'm in Houston, Texas. I'm out here. I'm with lipstick ready. <laughs> I love LA shirt on, man. If you out there, LA. LA. Okay. There you go. Good marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that's why the you know everything that we were tweeting out. It says you here's the link you can watch live. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, my boy Doctor Post a lots online. He says we have a Q and A over here on the side. He says welcome to the future. <laughs> yes. I just wrote that on uh, Instagram. I just posted a post. I was like, man, times have changed. I'm sitting there doing an interview on my tablet. It's, it's crazy. Insane. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. That's the benefit of the indie artist, though. It's like you, you got so many outlets to be heard, seen. You know what I mean? So much control over your product. Exactly. I was, I was just telling uh, my friend, matter of fact, he's here with me now, my partner, Jay Austin. I was telling him, like, you really can't say upcoming no more because you're more of an independent artist because now you have control to put out what you want. You have control to have your own percentages of money. You have you control yourself instead of having to go to a label. I mean, the only reason you really go to a label is like for nowadays is for a distribution deal, really. It, I believe you know for like marketing and those things. But if you have that budget behind you, or if you have that that drive to put out a um, ten thousand CDs yourself and put them in storage yourself, you really won't need a label nowadays. Now let me ask you this, because you know we just had this conversation with Smith and his brother yesterday and it's about you know the indie movement and the whole bit what is it that you would want from a label as an independent artist you get what I'm saying it's like do you want to remain independent like do everything yourself or if you could pick and choose something from the labels what would that be and what would you want to keep on your own because, you know, sometimes we go to labels, you have to sign over your rights, you have to sign over this, mm -hmm. and you're their property. So as an independent artist yourself, what is it that you would want right now as a label if you could have it? Um, you know, a distribution deal and a way to put out my product. Um, an inch where people can find the music, um, you know, I feel... With a distribution, it would come with the marketing and the uh, promotion of it, really. But as far as things that I will keep, I try to keep like um, like my masters to everything, still recording everything in house, uh, because the majority of all my music that I do is in house from beats to everything. So really, I would like to get like a a marketing or a, a distribution deal, or, you know. So you find basically, as an independent artist, that's your biggest challenge is getting getting it to the masses so you can get in front of more people. Yes, ma'am, because... So, then let me ask you this, because now, like we just talked about a second ago, with, mm -hmm. you know, all these wonderful things being free, the Internet, you know, you've got SoundCloud, you got CD Baby, you got all these things. Do we really need distribution in stores? Because people aren't really buying CDs like that anymore. They buy them, but they really don't. You know, because like me personally, I haven't bought a CD in forever. And I still pay to huh. listen because what happens is I'm one of those that pays $10 a month for Spotify. I yeah. don't have time to go to the store. I don't have time, and I'm not going on iTunes and pay $0.99 cent a song. I would just rather play one flat rate and whatever I need or want because, you know, it's like <laughs> over 3 billion songs or whatever on there. I'm glad, I'm so, glad you said that. 
Yeah, so it's like they, you guys, you know, the the artists still get paid for, mm -hmm. um, you know, doing it. But for me, it's easy. <laughs> Who's that in the background? Austin, back there. What's happening with it? <laughs> me and you chilling right now. Tell, tell him he just did that in front of millions of people on on YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. But oh. you know, man, what my, I'm nigga, doing that, my nigga, my nigga, man. <laughs> about what that, I'm getting at is that you know we no longer necessarily want you know I don't want a CD I don't because everything I do is digital I need it on my iPod I need it on my computer I need it on my phone and I don't have time to sit here bring the CD home put it in a computer and download it convert it all of that so I just use Spotify which still pays artists their royalties oh, so nice. you know. I guess my question is, do you really need that type of distribution? Or is it that you just need exposure so that people will come and find you at your website, CD Baby, or wherever your stuff is digitally, and then download it? Um, I had really the reason why I would say I would, I, I would like to um, use the, the label, record label for distribution CD-wise because... Um, Spotify wise and iTunes wise, I have you know done that myself, and I just would like to capture everyone. It's you know it's still people out there that still buy CDs. It's still people that buys records, and I would like to just cover that. You know I'm you know I would like to the people that still buy CDs. I would like them to buy CDs. The people that that is on Spotify, I would like them to get it off Spotify. The people that are out to make sure I got everything covered. You know, and that's one right. thing that my uh, my management. Was helping me, you know, get the grass on. It's tying everything up to. I make sure that I have every option to eat. You know, every option to get a dollar or make something off a CD and make sure that I got it where everybody can pick it up. If you're a CD head, you can get a CD. If you're a Spotify, you're small Spotify, you can get it there. You know, like that. So that's why I would say I would I would like a label just to do that. But also the exposure. But how 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 quick stuff goes up. Uh, so uh viral so fast, you know, our exposure just that the you have to do the right thing. You have to you have to be consistent, I think, and the exposure will come. Absolutely. And that's what I'm saying because for instance, let's talk about what Beyonce did, right? Now we know Beyonce's Beyonce, but at the end of the day, you know, majors still, you know, they have a whole marketing team and they're strategizing on advertising to promote it and when to release it and doing all these things up to the release and none of that was done and she is not on CD it's all digital she just released it online boom so you yeah. get what I'm saying so and you know when you build up I feel like when you build up your following your fan base all of that and people really really dig you and want your music they're going to seek it out however they can get it and granted, people still do the old school thing, but at the end of the day, it's still going to turn into digital because everybody's on their phone. And when you look at the statistics of what everybody's accessing, over 85% of the time, people are accessing websites and everything from their phone, even Netflix, you know. So everything is going mobile, which is why these, these Internet providers are getting sneaky and going up on their prices because they know that we're more tied to it and we need it more now. But, you know, so what are you doing on your end and your management's end to help get yourself more exposure as an indie artist? Um, we um, created, we got our website um, undergoing. They have one up with the music on there and um, the product and uh, the, the bio. Um, we really, um, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media, and I'm still hitting the ground. I'm still passing out flyers, passing out CDs. Um, going to the DJs and make sure the DJs have the records, keeping the music where the people can find it as far as, you know, in the clubs and building and keeping artwork out, keeping keeping the visuals for people to see. And I mean that's what we're doing right now, trying to build up something. We um we've been together for uh, like two months now, so we're still in the process of setting everything up. Um but I, I it, it, we didn't had a, a good start, and I'm I'm hoping for the future to be even better. Well, I'm sure it will be, especially you know I I noticed how you are online. You know you're really always 
promoting out there, you're promoting your singles and things of that sort. Doing interviews such as this one here on Lipstick Radio Sound Booth helps um, because, you know, a lot of people do tune in to us, you know, and, and they watch. And, you know, getting in on other, you know, people's radio shows. Because one of the things I try to preach as well is, you know, I have a radio show. A lot of people have a radio show. But the thing is, people, I don't feel I'm in competition with anybody else. I don't. Because there's music. Everyone loves music. Everyone is going to be attached to a different personality. And I, too, listen to other indie stations as well. Cooley High um, has a wonderful, wonderful platform for artists and he interviews and he plays them and so it's a movement it's an independent movement and to have a movement you gotta have more than one person doing it and you can't have that competition attitude so it's kind of like I like spreading the love so I definitely pass along your information to all the other affiliates that I deal with so that we can get you a little bit more exposure and things of that sort and that's that's really what it's about that's fine thank you absolutely thank you now we have another question for you. It says, "How do you feel about building with other bloggers and online radio shows?" I guess we just kind of went into that, but how do you feel about it? I mean, I do them. It's, I try to find them. Um, me and me and the team try to find them. I, I'm a big fan of them because I feel like it gives me an opportunity to interact with people. It gives me opportunity to show more of my personality outside of the music. So I'm, um, you know, if y'all have, if y'all guys got blog shows, anything, you know, uh, y'all can email me. I'm willing to sit down and talk to anybody about any subject. I, I'm really a people person, so I love, uh, I love doing interviews. I love, <laughs> it's just the <laughs> part about it. Um, I, I, I think it's a great idea. I, I think that every everyone should, if you feel like you have that 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 way of helping people by. The connects that you have, I feel like I'll do it. I mean, because like God say, you know, when someone gives you something, pay for it. You don't always have to pay back. You can pay for it and help those after someone has helped you. Well, you know, since we have some people watching right now and you know people listening in, definitely give them your how they can find you right now. We'll do it again at the end, but in the middle, you know, maybe somebody wants to check out your website and things while we're talking. So give them your mm -hmm. website and your Twitter and all that good stuff where they can find you. You can find me on Twitter, you can find me on SoundCloud, and you can find me on Instagram. They All three of them, the same thing, can be on uh, Acre underscore music. That's A-C-R-E underscore M-U-S-I-C. So all three are the same. And if you would like to go to the website, you can go to www.freshambition.com, and you can find everything as far as, you know, um, the, the different type of things that we got marketing as far as the, the, the clothing line that they got going on with the uh, company that I'm working with and different avenues and the different things that we're doing that you may can be a part of. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up about your name. Now, you know I'm going to ask you, does Acre stand for anything? Because I know that you have the periods after each letter. So is that an acronym for anything in particular? And how did you come up with that name? Uh, the acronym is uh, Always Correcting Rude Enemies. And I came up with it a long time ago when I was, uh, I'm originally from Galveston, when I was staying out there um, in Galveston. And growing up, I felt like um, we were so caught up into this, you either, you know, went to school and, and with your life or you, worked in a plant or you've done something locally, but we have never really been uh, um, a place where people are known from getting heard from of music and known of doing things and this stuff. I wanted to be a want the person that, you know, my nephews and, you know, our children can look up and say he did music as his dream and he was he was good at it and he did it, so I think I can. So always correct the rude enemy was for everyone that told me, man, now nah, you can't do this. No, nah, you ain't going to. I was gonna, I'm going to correct them through my journey of the success. Oh, that's wonderful. I really like that. You know, it's funny, too, because I had just tweeted out something the other morning, and I was saying, you know, basically let the haters fuel you mm -hmm. to progress forward because there's always going to be people. You're not, no one, you're not going to get everyone to like you. Not everybody's going to like you. They're not going to get it. And usually it's because it's something in you that they really envy that they wish that they were. But whatever the case is, we are not Dr. Phil. I don't <laughs> care. So, but I do utilize that to the fullest 
to fuel my goals and to keep moving higher and I definitely encourage everyone else to do the same thing. So anyway, since we could not say, you know, your news, um, <laughs> what else is it that you can share? <laughs> <laughs> um, if you out here in Houston, I'll be uh, opening up for Slick Rick for his 25th annual tour uh, April 11th at Warehouse Live. So that's a big deal. I know all the hip, original hip hop heads will be there for that. So that's the that's some of the biggest news that I got going right now. Being able to open up for a legend like him and oh you know, yeah, I love me some Slick Rick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I think I mean, all this I was going to. <laughs> I couldn't hear you. What you said? I said, now that's true old school hip hop. Love it. And I think <laughs> music caters to that that crowd. Like when you when you hear it, that's what a lot of my friends tell me. Like, man, you, your music is just so it's so old school. Like the real hip hop heads and listen to it. it ain't just a club song. It ain't. It's inspiring. So I feel like you know getting a chance to uh, open up for him and getting that crowd and bringing my crowd all together and putting it, a, a mixture of it will be an amazing show. Yeah, that, I can't wait to hear more about it. we got to have you back on after that show. And hopefully you got someone from Twitter to take some video footage because I would love to see that. <laughs> then I can, uh, then after that I can, when we come back I can tell you my news I can tell you. <laughs> I don't know who's listening in so I can't see it right now. Oh, oh, it'll be safe then? Okay, okay. <laughs> Well, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on Lipstick Radio Sound Booth. And you guys, you will hear Acres Music um, and Lipstick Radio Rotation. We'll be getting more music in rotation this weekend. So next week we'll have some new music out for you guys to gravitate to and love. But thank you so much for joining us. And tell them again where they can find you and your music before we go. First, I want to tell you thank you for having me. Thank you, Lipstick Radio, for uh, giving me this opportunity. And what's up to everybody that's on there? And you, like I said again, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on SoundCloud, you can find me at Acre underscore Music. That's A C R E underscore M U S I C. Get at me. I follow back. I um I interact. You know, I'm I'm just a people person. I'm ready to do whatever. And if you want to do features. If y'all want to do songs, you want to do anything, you can uh, find me. You can email me at bookingacre at gmail.com. B O O K I N G A C R E. Thank you for having me again. <laughs> Absolutely, my pleasure. And I'm glad you brought that up too, really quick. Uh -huh. Collaborations are really key. And um, I'm glad that you mentioned that, you know, if anyone was interested in working with you to reach out. That's right. And it's something I always preach, you know, collaborations are a huge thing. And whether it's with the music or two rappers on, on the track or whatever it is, um, great things come from collaborations. And um, I can't say enough about that. But thank you so much, Acre. Look for your songs in rotation next week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I look forward to chatting with you soon. And you know what I always say, be good. Peace. Peace. <laughs>